Okay, breaking right now, everyone. I am looking right here at page 33 on the new sanctions from the U.S. Treasury Department that literally just came out minutes ago. The bottom line here is that no American can own Venezuelan debt. Now, you'd say, okay, well, good, because why should any American be lending any money to Venezuela? Well, it turns out that money's already been lent, okay? And there's something called the secondary market. You got a primary market where those loans were initially made, and you got a secondary market where they trade after the fact. And, you know, the secondary market is a little bit of a barometer on whether or not there's really going to be a regime change. So you had seen, for example, that the prices of those bonds have been going up because people were betting on a regime change. Well, now you got all these big mutual funds in America, and a lot of them have very specific rules, regulations when it comes to index funds. And you cannot own stuff that's sanctioned. So what does that mean? They're going to have to sell it. They're going to have to sell all this stuff really quick, but they can't sell it to other Americans because the Treasury Department says, mm, we're not allowing Americans to hold this stuff. That means they're going to have to sell it to foreigners. And that means that Russia is out there creating a market and China's out there creating a market. And so instead of the good guys owning a company like Pedevesa in the end, well, you're going to have the bad guys being the ones that are in control. So even if the U.S. is successful in terms of helping the freedom fighters, is there a risk here tonight that it's all for naught? That China and Russia wind up controlling the assets in this country? Wouldn't that be tragic? All of this as the pressure ramps up on Venezuela's socialist dictator, Nicolas Maduro, to step down and call for fair and free elections. Juan Guaido, the man the U.S. and the rest of the free world recognizes as president of Venezuela, now appealing to Maduro's benefactors, Russia and China. And he's arguing it would be in their own best interest to switch sides, right? Come on over here because the ship has sailed. Clearly at this point, it is inevitable that there will be change. You have only to look at Vice President Mike Pence today, right back here in the United States, he told a gathering of Venezuelan Americans that the time for dialogue with Venezuela's socialist dictator is over and it is time for action. Joining me right now is someone who was at that gathering and at that roundtable with the Vice President today, Florida Congressman Mario diaz Balart. Good to have you here, sir. Great pleasure. I want to get to what happened in Miami today, but first of all, what's your initial reaction to this? I mean, I, I think that sometimes there's what we call the law of unintended consequences, and someone there in Treasury is saying, okay, well, we just want to sanction everything, right? We want to make it uh, really hard for the Venezuelan government, the current one, the invalid one, to have any access to capital markets. But in doing so, are you running the risk that you got the Russians and the Chinese that are going to be buying up all this stuff? And so instead of having your creditors be the good guys, us, you're going to have the bad guys. Yeah, except for the fact that 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 economy is collapsing. And so those uh, that debt is going to be worth less and less and less. Look, the screws are being tightened. They're being tightened on a terrorist, no, no, anti-American no, 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 no. I'm just going to jump in because I just want to explain something here. So, yes, yeah. the, the economy is collapsing, but actually those bonds would be Correct. worth more and more and more if, if Guaido is successful and if you're able to get a new, uh, a new administration and have open elections because the thinking would be you can open the economy and then all of a sudden those bondholders might actually get repaid. So, you know, and we don't have to go into this at length, but it's just, uh, it just broke moments ago, and the Treasury Department seems to be, uh, you know, they can't see the forest for the trees here. They want to choke off the funding, but they don't understand that inadvertently they're actually hurting themselves and hurting that country and hurting the opposition and helping the Russians. But we'll move on, sir, because, uh, you know, it's a little bit specialized. You were there in Miami today, Vice President Pence uh, making the case for a real solid change. Is it going to happen? And if so, how soon? Well, look, the Venezuelan people have been standing up for a while. They've been putting blood, by the way, and they've been, they've been getting killed and murdered in the streets uh, by the dictatorship. What has happened now, the big change that the United States and now the rest of our allies have now recognized a legitimate democratic interim government with a new president, 
uh, the world is now watching and supporting. And so this is, I think, I think we're now almost at the same time that we were just days before or weeks before the collapse of the Berlin Wall. Wow. Where things are teetering, they're delicate. Uh, we need to continue to pressure, tighten the screws, and also at the same time help uh, the uh, Venezuelan people. And that's precisely what President Trump and his administration have been doing, and they're doing it very effectively, by the way, uh, aggressively, but also very effectively. Yeah, you know, it, it, I spoke with the president the other day, and he reiterated that everything's on the table. Uh, he said mm -hmm. he wants to help the people of Venezuela. Um, and everything's on the table. When he says everything's on the table and they're not ruling anything out, what does that mean in terms of military action, can I ask you, by the U.S.? It's exactly what the president said. Every option is and must be on the table. And let's recognize that this is obviously important for Venezuela, for the Hemisphere, but it's also a national security issue for the United mm -hmm. States. You're talking about a regime that has close ties with all of the rogue regimes in the world, well, obviously Cuba, but also Iran, North Korea. There are actually even Middle Eastern countries that have strong presence in uh, Venezuela, like mm -hmm. they do in Cuba terrorist organizations, and the money that uh, Maduro, the Maduro dictatorship has been stealing by, from the Venezuelans, they have used to do some very nefarious things in this hemisphere and around the world. So obviously this is important for the Venezuelan people and for the hemisphere, but let's make no mistake, this is an issue of vital importance for the national security of the United States, which is why I'm so pleased and proud of the decisions that President Trump has made to make sure that the United States stands with the Venezuelan people stands with the cause of freedom, and yes, stands with the clear, you know, absolute national security interests of the United States of America. Yeah, no, I hear you, and I'm with you on that. Um, this is, you know, a pretty easy one, I think, regardless of what side of the aisle you're on. You know, there's a chance to be on the side of what's right and what the future should be or what's wrong, and that would be the Chinese, the, the Russians, the uh, Iranians, and Hezbollah, and the Cubans that are on the other side. But uh, do me a favor, make sure uh, when you get back to Washington there, you mention these uh, sanctions because I think they need to just go through them a little bit more carefully because they may run a risk here that we wind up uh, seeing some debt holders that we don't want to see there in Venezuela. Thank you so much, sir.